control. I want you to feel like you have control over what you're feeding your children. Hi you guys, welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. So this morning's video is going to be a little bit different to start out with. I'm going to be talking about baby food, okay? Um, baby food is one of my absolute passions. I love to make baby food for my kids, okay? And I would like to start out by saying that my heart goes out to any mothers that cannot find formula right now. Okay, I am a breastfeeding mother, so I've never had to personally buy formula, but I just want to say that I'm so sorry for what is going on, and I want to start talking about making baby food. I have been making my boys baby food since Hunter, so all four of them, I've made all of their baby food, and uh, I just thought that maybe it was time to start sharing a like a little mini series or maybe, uh, who knows, maybe it'll grow into something bigger than that, but a series on making our own healthy baby food because I hate to say it and I don't want to come off as a fear monger or anything similar, but if it's formula today, it could absolutely be baby food tomorrow. So I want you guys to know how very simple it is. <laughs> Seriously, so easy to make your own baby food. It's delicious. This one is a mango, banana, papaya, and strawberry, and it is so good. I had to keep the older boys out of it. Like, I'm actually going to make some and put it into Otter Pop uh, bags and put them in the freezer so that they can have them this summer because it is so delicious. Um, my biggest recommendation is, is sourcing local fruits and vegetables. I know not everybody can grow their own. Obviously, I'm not growing mangoes and I'm not growing papayas. <laughs> I wish I could, but it's just not possible. So sourcing good quality fresh produce is number one. So whether that is going to your farmer's market or going to a local fruit and vegetable place or even just going to your local grocery store and finding the best quality produce that you can is number one. I understand not everybody can afford to buy organic. These aren't organic. Some stuff that we get is and some stuff isn't. Um, it's all, obviously you have to get what you can find right now. We had this plan to do like this big um, view of all of the fruits and all the vegetables we got. We went down and we got some amazing strawberries from this local strawberry stand that we get uh, from every year. But other than that, we couldn't find local fruit anywhere. Nowhere. So we wound up, we actually wound up at our grocery outlet that we shop at every week. And we found mangoes. We found the little gold mangoes. We found the bigger, I'm not sure what these ones are called, the bigger mangoes. We found a papaya. I'm not even kidding you. It was like the size of Colt. <laughs> it was so big. And um, we found uh, blueberries and we found bananas. And it, it was just, so just do your best to source produce from wherever you can, the best you can, okay? So that's number one. Number two is storage and how you're going to be storing your baby food. All right, I love these little squeeze pouches. I actually have a little squeeze machine. Hold on, I have to get Tanner. Look who's awake and wanted to join the party. <laughs> okay, so I believe the brand is Infantino. Uh, yeah, it is. I have an Infantino squeeze station. I've actually bought three of them over the course of uh, motherhood. I got rid of the one after Hunter. I got rid of the one after William. And then I bought one with Colt and actually saved it because we knew we were going to have Tanner right away. Um, so we, I've had this last one through two babies and they're amazing. Now, you don't have to do that. You can just get little plastic Tupperwares. When I was first starting to feed Hunter before I got my Infantino squeeze station, I was pureeing and freezing all of the baby food into ice cube trays, the silicone ice cube trays, and then you just pop the pop them out and store them in a Ziploc bag. It's that easy. So I, I don't want you guys to ever think that you need some fancy gadgets to make your own baby food because you don't. Um, you, what I use, my main pureer that I use is a 
$13 emulsion blender from Walmart. <laughs> That's the main thing I use. I also have, when I'm making big batches, like we did last night with the papaya and everything, um, I also have a uh, KitchenAid food processor that I really love and I've, ha I've had it in other videos and I'll show you in, in this series, you'll see it. Um, but it is awesome, that works great. But when you're just doing small batches, just use a emulsion blender and they're not expensive at all. You could probably find one at a thrift store like Goodwill or whatever, but they're literally 12, 13 bucks at Walmart. Maybe higher now with inflation, <laughs> I don't know. But um, anyways, yeah, so the storage is simple. I like to freeze them and then just pull them out and put them in some warm water and uh, <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> I like to freeze them and put them in some warm water to thaw them out. It's, it's, it's such a simple thing. And I want you guys to feel like you can't, you have control. I want you to feel like you have control over what you're feeding your children. I don't ever want anyone ever to think that they have to rely on a company to provide them with their baby food. Um, so really just jump in and you can do it, I promise, you really can. Um, and so we are going to, the first one that we are going to be doing is going to be the mango, banana, papaya, and strawberry one. So stay tuned, we are going to be doing that probably in the next couple days, hopefully, as long as everything goes well. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys are doing great out there and stocking up what you can while you can and uh, getting prepared. All right. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Bye.